Welcome. Welcome to the beautiful Kyrgyzstan. More specifically, the Itakure Valley. Please, people at home, forgive the pronunciation of that, but I'm here witnessing probably one of the most spectacular views I've ever seen in my entire life. So why am I here? I'm here with work, with Beyond the Ultimate. It's the Mountain Ultra. And Chris King and I are out doing a bit of a recce of day one and day two. We're currently edging into day two territory, but whew, what a day it's been. We've, uh, <laughs> well, you've seen the views already. What can I really say? I really can't say anything, but Kyrgyzstan is a beautiful, beautiful place, it really is. I'll turn the camera around again right now, but this will be the view from tonight's camp. Absolutely stunning. A little bit about the Mountain Ultra. Five days, 200 kilometers, 9,000 meters of climb. Certainly, uh, going to be an epic one. We're down in the valley at around about 2,600 meters at the moment. The maximum elevation that the runners will go to is around about 4,000 meters. So everyone's been advised to acclimatize beforehand or join us on the acclimatization trek uh, before the race. But I really don't know what else to say. <laughs> I for once, I'm speechless. Um, this is my first time in Kyrgyzstan and never quite seen anywhere like it. I've been to the French Alps, I've been to Yosemite, but the Tian Shan mountain range are absolutely stunning. I can probably go on record and say this is the most spectacular campsite I've ever stayed at. The guys from the year over there just came over, so I used Google Translate to say that we're going to stay here tonight if that's all right. What a view. Time to pitch the tent. It's going to be a beautiful place to spend the evening. Quite looking forward to the light changing on the peak in the distance there. sunset is amazing. Okay, so I'm going to get some sleep. Tomorrow um, we're heading over the Taliti Pass into uh, the Karakol Valley. That's going to be ridiculously epic as well. So yeah, we're having, we're having fun out here, but we're working. This is work. Right, catch you tomorrow. So we've come up the valley to the point where there's a crossing because the, uh, the route comes up this valley so they get an amazing view of that just there and then they head back down this side and head up over the pass. So it's quite serviceable this bridge, pretty good. We've certainly crossed worse.
here we go. The Taliti Pass rises to about 3,900 metres. We've broken out of the tree line now and the view is opening up. It's absolutely stunning. We're at around about 2,900 metres and we think the turn off, which is about 5k further around the valley, is um, at about 3 1, something like that. And then we've got a sharp ascent over about four kilometres up to about 3 8. But what a day for it. We were just saying earlier on that if this was the French Alps or somewhere like that, it would be absolutely rammed with people. But other than a few shepherds and um, the odd person on horseback, we've not seen anyone at all. There is absolutely nobody here. What a place. Once again, lost to words. But when the runners come around that bend just there, I'm hoping that the weather's like this because that is a real treat. We did some water safety training uh, in like October last year and it's coming in handy now. There are some decent-ish places to cross but yeah, facing straight into the flow of the river, holes out front. View. This is it. The climb commences. monster of a climb. We're getting there though, but it's, yeah, <laughs> about 700 metre climb over two kilometres. Chris is powering on there. We're about another 300 metres or so from the, the saddle between the two, so. This time last year, I don't office job. <laughs> So we're just heading up this hill and then all of a sudden the family come over the top. Kids like eight year old, so we thought we were like hammering it, proper mountaineers, but no. <laughs> we are so close to the top. I don't mind telling you, this is the hardest climb I've ever done. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere else though. We've descended about 400 meters and it's leveling off a little bit now. Um, we're going to stop for some food in a moment. Whew. The Tian Shan Mountains, eh? I've had my proverbial backside handed to me today, but it's all part of the fun. All part of the acclimatization. What a day! Water time. Tents are set up just down the way there. 
we did around about um, 25 kilometers today with 1,400 and something meters of elevation, but yeah, that was tough. Really enjoyed it though. Type two fun, you know how it is. I'm still kind of recovering after the Spine Challenger North, but yeah, it was good. Looking forward to tomorrow. We're gonna just head down about three or so kilometers when we're getting picked up at 9 a.m. when we're going back to Caracol for a few days. But we'll be back out again in another two or three days. We're gonna do day four and day five. It's gonna be amazing. Right, I'll see you in the morning. So we've arrived at the pickup point. We're about an hour early, so we're gonna treat ourselves to uh, something sugary. That was a fun ride down the valley in the uh, four-wheel drive there. We're about to swap vehicles. Those cars can only come to this point, and this is the reason why. <laughs> Timor, our local guy, is about to pick us up in the moment. Welcome back to the second instalment of the Reki adventure here in the Tian Shan Mountains of Kyrgyzstan. So Chris and I are doing day four and day five over two or two and a half days. Um, we're going to camp up reasonably high uh, this time on this evening, but um, that took a while to get out of that valley there. You probably saw on the video that the views were just spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Glacier slash glacier, however you want to pronounce it. 
at the top of that valley just there. But um, we're getting a move on now because those clouds look a little bit ominous. Rain was in the forecast, but there was a very small chance of thunder, lightning. And we don't want to be caught in that. So we've got about 5k of downhill to do until there's a point where if we need to get off this uh, route, we can head straight down back into the valley if um, safety um, calls for it. Let's do it. So we've got some really threatening clouds coming over now and we've heard a few rumbles of thunder. So the name of the game is we're gonna head down. Serious rumbling happening over there. Every few seconds or so. So, yeah, why is this thing head down? So, I'm pleased to say the thunderstorm seems to have been kept in between that mountain range you can see in the distance there and the one just beyond it. And it must have been going around like a washing machine because that was. I have never ever heard thunder like it. I mean, tropical storms and things like that and like thunderstorms in Northern Australia and Malaysia, places like that. They could be crazy, can't they? But that, it was just constant. Boom, 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 boom. There was a sense of urgency to get off that high point there. But thankfully, it appears to have died down a little bit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold fire before we head up and over there um, to the next section of the route, we're gonna hold fire here. And if we need to camp here tonight, then so be it. And we'll do that bit tomorrow. Good morning. It's around about 6.30 and you probably guessed last night we set the tents up and sheltered from the rain and the thunderstorm for most of the afternoon and evening. Um, we were surrounded by cows most of the night, <laughs> which was a bit of a pain. Had to get up every now and then just shoo them away. But we're on the way again. We're continuing with day four and we're gonna see how far we get. That was a beast of a climb this early in the morning, but we made it and the views are spectacular. We're hoping that the cloud will burn away, but at the minute they're still hogging the higher peaks. This side's looking better though. Let's continue on. I'm sure you've already seen, but the wildflowers are absolutely stunning. So first thing this morning, we set off right in the center there. That flat spot that you can see right in the distance, there's two small cairns that we walked through the middle of. We went down into that valley and then crossed over the top of this one and then down to just over the brow of that hill. I say just over, about a hundred and so meters down vertically. And we're now heading back up and over the final climb of day four. So as we came down the river just back there, we took the opportunity because it was hammering it, down, hammering it down to set the tent up, have some lunch and just wait for the weather to pass, which was about an hour. And we're now heading up this climb. Blue skies appearing, be nice. It's been a different sort of day today. Yesterday we had thunderstorms, today we've had rain. 
bit of a mixed bag this afternoon, hopefully. Cloud and sun. Fingers crossed. That is the next on the list. Day four finishes down in the valley and that's the start of day five, which is probably what we're gonna do this afternoon. That's a sharp one. So we've made it down to the valley, the end of the route for day four. But uh, we're gonna cross the river. The river is quite deep, but luckily, there are some guys here with some horses and they're gonna take us over on horseback across the river. I did say that I wanted to ride a horse while I was here, so we're ticking that one off as well. We just need to make a plan for what happens with the race now, because these guys aren't here all the time. turned into a really spectacular evening. It was raining this morning, it's raining most of the day, but it's beautiful now. So we crossed the river earlier on, on horseback. We walked downstream to see if we could find the bridge. The bridge is out. <laughs> and we've just ventured back upstream past, past the horse crossing. And uh, Chris has gone for a run just around the corner to see if you can find any suitable places for the runners to cross on the day. It's looking quite, um, quite tricky in places, but hopefully there's a few rivers meeting here, one coming off the valley over there, so it might be a little better, a kilometer or so up there. So we'll see what Chris reports back. But yeah, what a beautiful evening. I think we're gonna come just here, or maybe on that next ledge, so we're away from the noise of the river. Not that I mind that, it's quite nice actually, it's quite therapeutic. What a beautiful place. I've said it many times already in this video, but... Chris is on top of the hill there, I think he's found somewhere. <laughs> he's over the other side, so yeah, he's definitely found somewhere to cross. He's done it. I was half expecting him to come floating downstream, but I'm glad that he's made it across. He's just got to make it back now. That's good then. If he's found a reasonable place to cross, we're only about 750 meters, a kilometer up from where you come out of the, come off the descent off the hill from earlier on. So hopefully it'll just be up there, cross and then down, because on the level where we cross with the horses is where the camp's going to be for night four. We made it to the top of the climb. That was a steep, steep monster. Another six or seven K to go down in the valley now. Just gotta get down. Yeah, baby. A cold beer awaits in Caracol. 
yeah. or two or three maybe. <laughs> Let's do it. How are you feeling, Chris? I, uh, I'm feeling very tired. <laughs> I, want a, I want some water. I'm considering licking this glacier here. That's not a bad shout. What a day though, absolutely beautiful. It's really warm though. Thankfully, there is a bit of a breeze as we've come across the top here. To uh, try and take my mind off the pain, I've been listening to the book by Richard Asquith, um, Feet in the Clouds. So while I'm struggling up a hill, I'm listening to stories of fell running legends who, who, uh, <laughs> who have completed amazing feats while well, I'm out of breath. Mind you, we're nearly at 4,000 meters though, so it's higher than the Lakeland Fells, but still, that was tough. Yes, water. We've made it down to the valley. And that's the end of this section of the trek. So just to recap, the reason why we're here, Chris and I are doing a recce of the course for the Mountain Ultra, beyond the, beyond the ultimate Mountain Ultra. And we're gonna head back to Karakor for a few days now. And in about three or four days, the first contingent of the runners arrive and we're gonna do an acclimatization trek. So that's three days, and then the race is five days. This is like the final stage. From where we set off this morning, they run over where we came. They'll do a loop around another peak there and then go back over. And yeah, that's gonna be a tough last day. But what a place this really is. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but seeing some of the images that uh, Ibrahim, one of the local guys here had shared, and various others online. <laughs> it did not disappoint. <laughs> this place is absolutely beautiful, as you can see. So dramatic, so wild, so rugged, so extreme, and there's no one here. There's lots of uh, farmers and herders, but there's no one trekking, hardly anyone. I think in the six days that we've been out, we've probably seen two or three other groups of people. Monster. The value of the building, right? Wow. Pretend that's rounded, all right? Pop it over. Leave that on, all right? Now you're going to protect, that's really going to, we found that really reduces shear forces. Good morning and welcome back to the spectacular Tian Shan Mountains in Kyrgyzstan. We're here on the acclimatization trek now. Chris and I spent three or four days in Karakol at the Green Yard Hotel doing admin, catching up with uh, race information and preparing for the runners arriving. They arrived on the 21st. We set off on the 22nd, which was yesterday, up to that camp there. We did 15 kilometers with about 900 meters of ascent. Had a nice relaxing afternoon by the river. And today, we're gonna head up onto a bit you'll have already seen, which will be a section of day four's route, where we had the thunderstorms. <laughs> we're gonna head up to that point there. So, it's now about 9 a.m. We're climbing steadily, and there'll be a few points along the way that we'll pause. But one of the views that I'm looking forward to today, which you've already seen, 
is the view of that glacier. Glacier. I'm from Derbyshire. I don't know how to pronounce these things. Whew. Let's do it. The trekkers have just got to the point of the amazing view. As always, I'm going to say it, what an amazing day. Um, the climb out of the valley there from the place where Chris and I camped with all cows is it's quite sharp, it's undulating and there are short sections where you can get a bit of a rest and it's the final push up to that saddle there. But this is just a beautiful descent and on race day this will be a nice climb for the runners to come up. But I'm just in awe of the views here. There's our local guy Enti, our trek leader, such a nice guy. Just look at that. River snaking down the valley, mountain in the centre perfectly framed by the mountains on the right and the left, glaciers in the distance. This is a postcard right here. Welcome to Kyrgyzstan. We've made it, we made it down to camp. Perfectly serviceable bridge here. What a day. What a day. We have a toilet. Chris and Tunner back. How good does that look? It's another fabulous evening. We've been in camp since about half past four and we've just spent the afternoon and most of the evening relaxing chatting and eating some great food prepared by the uh, local guys. Still can't, can't quite believe that I'm here, you know. It's so beautiful. And it's such a great bunch of people as well. Looking forward to the race, but this video will mainly be about our adventure on the recce and then the trek. But yeah. What a place this really is. It's amazing. That horse was making a noise all night. You are not our best friend, buddy. The 
views are still stunning. We're heading down and out of the valley now and we're getting picked up to head back to the green yard at Caracol. Still got another 10k or so to go, but yeah. Still lost for words. We've been here around about two weeks now and it doesn't get old. Still stunning, still beautiful, still fantastic weather and still enjoying it. The cavalry is here. So, once again, I forgot to record an outro. After the trek, we went back to Caracol, and the day after, we registered the runners and then set off to base camp. We were treated to a really interesting cultural show by some local herders on horseback. The way they still hunt with eagles is really fascinating. You, Hefner. <laughs> We crossed a few more rickety looking bridges on the way into the base camp. Chris delivered the pre-race briefing before all the runners went off to bed to try and get some sleep. My role on the race was to mark the course. So that was another 200 or so kilometers over the five days, but it was truly spectacular. We stayed in some great accommodation, treated to some yurts the first night, which was nice. And on day two of the race, we were back up and over to Leti Pass once again. We beat them, Nickel. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I had a great day on day two. I teamed up with Mickle, the photographer, and our task was to beat the front runners, John and Michael, to the top of the pass. And we did it. The weather closed in on the way down to Caracol Valley. After an hour or so of battling through thunder, lightning and hail, the sun finally came out and we swept the course to the finish. Once again, another early morning rise and a crazy vehicle and then a ride round to meet Steve to mark days four and five. Obviously, a few more crazy bridges thrown in for good measure. But look at that for a finish line. That was finish line on days four and five. Day five was absolutely stunning. And it was a really great end to a fantastic event. Some great friends made, spectacular views enjoyed. Really looking forward to returning again next year. So as always, thanks for watching. Speak to you all soon. Bye for now.